So today, I wanted to answer the question, why is that the vertex of a parabola always going to be at x equals negative b over 2a? What do we mean? Well, suppose we start with the standard form of a quadratic equation, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. The graph of it is going to be a parabola, either open down or open up. We know if a is negative, then it will open down. If a is positive, it will open up. But in either case, the vertex is going to be at x equal to negative b over 2a. And since we usually label the vertex as h comma k, and h is the x value, so you can look at this as h being equal to negative b over 2a. Same thing here. And I will show you guys two ways, plus a bonus way of why this is true. Let's start with the first way, which is we are going to complete the square from the standard form so we can get to the vertex form. So CTS for completing the square. So I'll write down the steps for you guys. First, this is what we want. We want to focus on just x squared plus bx. Notice we want one in front of the x squared. And then here I'm using capital B because I have lowercase b right here already. We want one of we just want this, so I focus on this. Okay, how do we do that? Here we have a, we want one. Don't worry, it's a small fix. It's a small fix, easy fix. Just divide everybody by a. And of course, right here, a, it's not equal to zero because otherwise we couldn't even have a quadratic equation in the first place. So just divide and then here we will have y over a equals this is now x squared plus this is b over a x. Leave a space. And then right here, continue with plus c over a. Good. So we got what we want. And this is extremely important. You always need to know what you would want in life, not just for math. Next, we are going to add, here is the magic number. We are going to take one half of this coefficient and then square that. We are going to add this number so that we can complete the square. So in our case here, the coefficient is b over a. I know all these are just letters except for the two. But let's see. Okay, we are going to take one half of the coefficient, little b over little a and then square that. And this right here is just one times b. This is going to be just b. Square that is just b squared. And then two squared is four. And then a squared is just a squared. This is what we are going to add right here. Plus b squared over four a squared. Now usually we we'll add this to both sides, but you can also do this. If you add it here, on the same side of the equation, just go ahead, subtract it, b squared over 4a squared, so that they are just going to be zero. We didn't change the value of this equation. Hmm, why is this the magic number? Because this is so magical, it will make this factorable, and both factors will be equal, so we get a perfect square. So, I will convince you guys that real quick though. If you do the tic-tac-toe method, x times x gives us x squared, and then what times all give us this though? The answer is this, it's always going to be the inside. We can put down b over 2a, b over 2a. Check this out. x times this is b over 2a x, and then do another one, b over 2a times x. Add them up, we have two of them to be over the same denominator. Cancel. Don't we just get this back? So if we factor this, we just get x plus b over 2a times another one, x plus b over 2a, which is just x plus b over 2a squared. So let me write that down right here. OK, and then we can continue. On the left-hand side, we still have y over a. That's equal to this. And then the rest right here doesn't really matter. I'm just going to write down c over a minus b squared over 4a squared. 
Now, just one final touch. We want to isolate the y, so we can get to the vertex form. So let's multiply everybody by a. a times this, we get just y. a times this, we'll put the a in the front. So x. And instead of the plus, b over 2a, I'm going to write it as minus parentheses negative b over 2a square on the outside of the parentheses, like that. And then this times this is just plus c, and this times this, one of the a's reduced out, so we get minus b squared over 4a. Okay? So, in fact, we can see that if we compare this equation with the vertex form of a parabola, which is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Then you can see that h is this, and then k is both of these numbers. Usually we don't remember the k value formula, because you can always, after finding the h, plug into the original y equation, so you can find out the y value of the vertex, so we don't really need to know that, but for the h, as you can see, it is negative b over 2a, just like what we said earlier. Now, this is how else that we can prove it. If you look at the picture, the parabola is always going to be symmetrical. The vertex is going to be right in the middle. Okay? And notice that sometimes if the parabola crosses the x-axis, we can use the quadratic formula to find the x-intercept. Because for the x-intercept, it's when y is equal to 0. So, let's consider that case. If we have a parabola like this, here is the x-intercept, and that's when y is equal to 0. I'm just going to indicate that this is when y is equal to 0. And if you put that in here, we get 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And since we have two of them, here's the deal. We can use the quadratic formula to find that out, right? And if you do so, x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Suppose we have two different ones, because sometimes it's possible to have the parabola that the vertex is right on the x-axis, so we just have one of them. In that case, the roots are equal. That's the vertex. So, right here, this x-intercept, we can select the negative version because I purpose put it at the negative side, right? So that's negative b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then this right here, it's negative b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, how are we going to find the middle though? To find the middle, you always add two things together and divide it by two. That's how we find the average as well. So we are going to add this and that together, and after that, divide it by two. Okay? And the good thing for that is, if you just look at the top, they have the same denominator already. This is minus, this is plus. So this and that will just cancel each other out. And then if you look at the top, we have negative b minus b. So that's negative 2b over 2a. But then remember, to find the average, we still have to divide it by 2. Now that's how we find the middle. So this and that cancel, but we divide it by 2 again. So this is negative b over a and over 2, which is the same as over 2a. Once again, the vertex formula of a parabola. As you can see, this argument will work really nicely when the parabola does cross the x-axis, especially at two different points. Suppose it does send out such as this one, or maybe such as like this right here, then this argument might not work so nicely unless you go to the complex world. But I think if you just want to get a feel of like why this formula is like this, then I think this argument should be pretty satisfying. So I'm not going to address this kind of issues in that much detail. If you really want to, what you can really do is you can consider a horizontal line somewhere. Let's say this is when y is equal to k. And then you find the solutions here and here. And then you find the middle. Same thing. Seriously. Okay, but 
you can try that. Anyways, here's the bonus part. Okay, this is for the people who will be taking calculus in the future. It may not make too much sense right now if you haven't done any calculus, but I will show it to you. Remember this? Once you study calculus, come back to here, and it'll be, oh, it's really cool. Have a look. I'm gonna grab this real quick. Either we get this or that, right? So I can have a graph looks like this, or I can have the graph looks like this. And of course, you can move the parabola anywhere in the xy plane. But here's the deal. If you look at the vertex, if you place your pen, pencil, marker to there, just let it sit gently, then you see that the marker is going to be horizontal. Likewise, in this situation, the marker will be horizontal. And this is what we call a tangent line. If you place it somewhere else, then you can see the marker will be pointing downward, slope zero. But the beauty for this right here, the slope of this little horizontal segment is equal to zero, likewise for this. Now, how can we find the slope from the original equation? Here, let me introduce you guys the power rule for derivative, which is to help us find the slope of the tangent line. So, I'll write this down. This is the power rule. And the notation is the following. If today we do the derivative, the notation for that is just d dx. This means to take the derivative. If we have x to some power, let's say x to the nth power, then the power rule says, put the power to the front, minus one, that's it. n times x to the n minus one. If you have a number in front, just multiply them. They are okay, they are cool with each other. So let's have a look right here. We have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm going to take the derivative on both sides. On the left hand side, here's the notation. We write it as dy dx. It's just to find the slope, namely the derivative. But right here is where we are going to use the power rule. Notice the x and x have to match in order to apply the power rule. Right here, we have x to the second power. So we bring the power to the front, minus one, 2 to the front, minus 1, 2 times a is 2a, x to the first power is just x. Next, this is x to what power? First power, let me indicate that. And then do the same thing, put the power to the front, minus 1. So we have plus b, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, isn't it? So that's x to the 0th power. Now, this is c, where's the x? There's no x. But we can purposely write it x to the zero's power. So we can apply the power rule by putting the zero to the front and then minus one. But zero times c is still zero, so it's like adding zero, which doesn't matter. x to the zero, just like this, it's just one. So all in all, we just get 2ax plus b. This will tell you the slope value at any x that you want on the graph. But we don't have a specific x value. We are trying to find out at what x, at what x value will give us slope is equal to zero. So we are going to look at this. We are going to set it equal to zero and solve for x. Now have a look. Put a b to the other side. 2ax equals negative b. And then divide the 2a to both sides x equals negative b over 2a. Whoa! 